Hello, bookish friends. Uh, welcome to my uh, July wrap-up part two. I know July is not over yet, uh, but it is very unlikely that I will uh, finish another work in these two days. In this video, uh, I will uh, talk about the six works uh, that I finished in the second half of July. And uh, like I did in my previous wrap-ups, uh, I will insert the clips uh, that I recorded very soon after I finished those works. Today is the 16th of July and uh, I finished another work that I was reading for Jane Austen July, uh, which was the audio play adaptation of Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, uh, adapted by Christina Calvet. This audio play is uh, performed by LA Theatre Works, is directed by Merle Friedman, and it stars uh, Kate Borden and uh, Sandy Snyder and Miriam Margolius in the prominent roles. Of course, uh, the play is quite a abridged version of uh, Pride and Prejudice. Uh, however, uh, I thought uh, it was uh, a very good uh, stage adaptation in terms of including the very major plot points. On the other hand, I have to say I did not like the performance of uh, some of the male uh, voice actors, such as uh, Mr. Collins and uh, Mr. Bingley. Since uh, I really do love uh, the book, I thought it was a very, very decent adaptation. Uh, I gave uh, Pride and Prejudice uh, audio play adapted uh, by uh, Christina Calvert an 8 out of 10. Today is the 18th of uh, July and uh, I finished a, a short story collection by one of my favorite authors, uh, Shermin Yashar, uh, titled after one of the uh, short stories, uh, Kalk Yerine Yat. I read this collection uh, for uh, Read Your Shelf Challenge and this collection consists of uh, short stories that are all about uh, people's uh, daily life and their relationships with each other uh, like a true Shermin Yashar style. There was a subtle wit in all of them. I read uh, the uh, short stories with a smile on my face. However, the, the short story uh, which was my favorite it was uh, the most dramatic uh, short story, uh, so uh, she could write uh, both humorous and uh, quite emotional uh, stories. There were two clear favorites. Uh, one of them was uh, about a, a safety guard uh, in a museum in Istanbul who came there, uh, Erzincan, escaping uh, from his father. The other one uh, was uh, the uh, short story that the book was titled after. Kalk Yerinayat, uh, which talks about a man who one day rents a very cheap apartment uh, from an elderly lady and that many humorous things do happen. The other uh, short stories were also very very decent. Uh, so uh, as an average I gave uh, this uh, short story collection uh, Kalk Yerinayat by Shermin Yashar an 8 out of 10. Today is the 21st of July and uh, I finished another book for Jane Austen July titled uh, Jane Austen Hayatımı Mahvetti. I read the Turkish edition of this book and the original title of this book is uh, Jane Austen Ruined My Life. Uh, in this book uh, we uh, follow uh, Emma, an English professor and her uh, speciality is uh, Jane Austen works. She is uh, divorced from her ex-husband who cheated on her with her assistant. She is also uh, expelled uh, from uh, the university because of this assistant's lying. And she one day receives a uh, call from elderly lady from England uh, who says that uh, she has information about Jane Austen works. And uh, when she goes there uh, to her cousin's house, she sees that uh, her best friend from college, whom she hadn't spoken to him after married, uh, is also there. and. Uh, while uh, Emma uh, tries to uh, find the uh, mystery uh, of uh, what uh, this elderly lady wants, she tries to deal with uh, the attraction uh, that uh, she is feeling uh, for Adam. I like this book more than I thought that I would. Uh, it was full of uh, hints about uh, Jane Austen's life and also Jane Austen's work. The fictional mystery in the book uh, was uh, quite interesting. I quite liked the character development of Emma. And uh, I also uh, quite like the fact that uh, this was not a retelling of any of the books. However, it had sections that are similar uh, to each of our work. 
that clearly shows the author's adoration for Jane Austen. I quite liked uh, the unconventional ending, which might not be for everyone. Only thing that would be a drawback uh, for readers is uh, if you do not know Jane Austen and her works well enough, you might not enjoy this book as much as, as I did. Overall, I gave uh, Jane Austen uh, Hayatımı Mahvetti, Jane Austen Ruined My Life by Beth Patillo a 8 out of 10. Today is the 27th of July and uh, I finished uh, two books today. The first one was a stage play that I was reading for uh, Jane Austen July. Miss Elizabeth Bennet by A. A. M. Milne. I've actually heard about this work uh, from another uh, work about uh, Jane Austen, which was The Genius of Jane Austen uh, by Paula Bryan. In that book, uh, she mentioned uh, that uh, A. A. M. Milne uh, was a uh, very uh, big fan of uh, Jane Austen's writing and wrote a stage play adaptation of Pride and Prejudice to show his love uh, for uh, Jane Austen's writing. Unfortunately, this play was not uh, acted uh, on stage after it was written, but I listened uh, to a uh, later version of uh, the play, which I found in YouTube. The play follows basically the same plot uh, as the novel, uh, but uh, of course, uh, to uh, make it uh, easier to perform on stage, the location of uh, some scenes were uh, changed and some details uh, were cut out uh, to uh, make it uh, quite short. Although I thought it was a decent adaptation, many of the side stories, uh, which really uh, supports the theme of the play, uh, were cut out uh, to make room uh, for, of course, uh, Darcy and Elizabeth's relationship. But I found it uh, interesting how Milne most probably uh, very much uh, liked Mr. Bennett and uh, tried to show him in a more favorable light than he is in the novel. Uh, so overall, uh, I gave uh, Miss Elizabeth Bennet by A. A. M. Milne a 7 out of 10. The second uh, work that I finished uh, today was uh, a quite a thick novel uh, that I was reading for uh, Books of Alfred Hitchcock project, Topaz by uh, Leon Uris. Uh, in this novel, uh, we follow a fictional uh, retelling of uh, the Cuban Missile Crisis. We mainly follow the French intelligence agent who tries to uncover uh, the truth about uh, the Operation Topaz, uh, which was uh, created by uh, the Soviet Russians to infiltrate into Western intelligence. Also, of course, how they discovered uh, the existence of uh, military missiles in C Cuba. Actually, I uh, quite like uh, spy uh, thriller novels uh, most of the time. This one was not uh, certainly a favorite for me. First of all, it felt too long. I thought the story could have been told uh, much more excitingly in a shorter uh, version. Although the uh, political historical background was interesting, uh, considering that it was written uh, in recent times uh, to the crisis. However, uh, the point of view made me feel like I was reading a uh, American propaganda. Uh, personally, I think uh, there are advantages and disadvantages to every political movement. And no ideology is uh, pure perfect. That's why uh, it bothered me. Uh, it would have been the same uh, for any other uh, culture and ideology. And I also uh, thought the writing style was not very, very exciting. Uh, so I will probably uh, not read uh, any other books uh, from Leon Uris, although uh, he seems to be a quite favorite for his style. So I gave uh, Topaz by Leon Uris a 6 out of 10. Today is the 29th of July and uh, I finished uh, the book that I was body reading with uh, Loretta in uh, memory of uh, Alice uh, at Alice and the Giant Bookshelf who sadly passed away uh, last month. The book that we chose uh, was a thriller book uh, that was uh, recommended uh, to Alice in one of her videos, uh, Darkly Dreaming Dexter by Jeff Lindsay. Uh, I have of course heard of uh, the TV adaptation of this uh, book. But when Alice mentioned the book, uh, I had uh, put it on my uh, Goodreads TBR. And uh, Loretta uh, said that it was the same for her as well. In this book, uh, we follow uh, Dexter Morgan, who has been adopted uh, by a police officer 
uh, when he is found in, in a crime scene. Dexter has an urge to kill. He's basically a serial killer. And he justifies uh, his killings uh, by killing only uh, people who are guilty of very horrific crimes, uh, such as mass murder, uh, rape or child abuse. But he also works for the forensics team uh, in Miami Police Department with his adopted sister. When the prostitutes are uh, starting to be killed by a killer who seems to uh, favor uh, Dexter's methods, uh, Dexter uh, finds himself both uh, admiring uh, the uh, killer as well as trying to find him. Normally, I'm not uh, a fan of being in an antagonist point of view. Uh, but with Alice's suggestion, I decided to give it a try. When in the first chapter, <laughs> I knew that uh, I would very much enjoy the writing style of uh, Jeff Lindsay. And uh, as uh, time passed, uh, I grew uh, quite fond of uh, Dexter uh, because uh, although he is a serial killer, uh, he is a very, very complex character, which is uh, the type of character that I really, really do like reading about in books. And the mystery uh, was uh, quite decent in this first book. I very much enjoyed uh, this book and uh, I plan to continue with the uh, rest of the books in the series. But what made this reading experience be even better uh, was the uh, discussions that we had with Loretta uh, about the book and uh, also about Alice, of course. She was uh, the perfect better reader uh, for this book and uh, as well as uh, other books that uh, we will hopefully better read in the future. And I gave uh, Dark Dreaming Dexter by Jeff Lindsay an 8 out of 10. Those were the six works uh, that I uh, finished in the second half of July. Uh, please comment down below. Did you read any of the books that I mentioned in this video? And uh, what do you think of them? Uh, if you're a new viewer, first of all, welcome. Uh, please like and subscribe. Hope to see you very soon. Bye. As for Turkish word of the day, I'm going to choose engaged. Engaged means nishanlı in Turkish and nishanlı is our Turkish word of the day. Have a good day.